What it is, everyone. We're back with another top five exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. I'm Brandy. And today we are going to be talking about our top five doomed romances. Not every love story has a happy ending. Many of um, them don't. Yeah, but you know what? That's what makes them so awesome. Um, so obviously doomed romance. If you haven't seen these films, we're going to yeah, be giving you some spoilers. Spoiler, spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of them you know from the beginning anyway. Right. Just the way the movies are. So, uh, so let's get started. Uh, I'll start off. Okay. Um, my number five film is from 1993. Directed by Martin Scorsese. It is The Age of Innocence. Okay, yeah. Daniel Day-Lewis. The Age of Doomed Romances, basically. Yeah. Daniel Day-Lewis, Newland Archer, this man of wealth and high, high class, um, engaged to Winona Ryder's Mae Welland. Everything seems like it's going to be perfect and said and orderly. And then... <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer comes along as Ellen Olenska and totally flips Daniel Day Lewis's world. Uh, the thing about this movie is that it's like you have this these two people who want to you know get together and live happily ever after, but forces beyond their own control is ripping mm -hmm. them apart, and it's just a really heartbreaking film. Uh, a, a movie that is just as much of a Scorsese film as any other of his work. Um, just not as visceral, <laughs> I guess. And um, just just a fantastic movie up and down. Yeah, so. I didn't pick anything that's from this era, but the mm -hmm. whole, like, there's just a list of yeah. books and movies based on those books from this era that where, like, the conventions of society keep mm -hmm. you from having these... Uh, these romances, exploring these people that you might be able to otherwise, it's, it's, where where one mistake just leaves everything crashing down, like you can't just say, oh, yeah, sorry, the, the way, and try again. The way the people you know? there like manipulate things, yeah. it's just like they backstab with a smile on their face. It's like, <laughs> oh, these people are so evil. But they're working within an interesting system. Exactly. There. All right. Um, okay, my number five. Um, an original story that is basically the definition of classic, if you go in mm. all the way back to Shakespeare. Mm. I am going with the 1996 version of Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> starring Leonardo DiCaprio and yes. Claire Danes, which is a really good movie. Mm. Like I, I, I was this. I was 13 when this came out. I thought it was amazing. I was obsessed mm -hmm. with it. Whatever. And then I didn't see it for a really long time. I saw it again recently, and I was like. Wow, this is legitimately good. This is not mm -hmm. just something that I really liked when I was 13 because all grandiose romances seem very appealing when you're right. 13. It's a really interesting take on a uh, timeless story. Great performances, great music. I love the way it's updated. Mm -hmm. um, I love the way that they keep all the original dialogue, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, there's lots of Shakespeare movies that do that, some better than others. I think this is the example of how to do that. Like, it is just wonderful. Yeah, it's a it's a great update to, to that story. Um, it's kind of like how, it's who was it, Baz Luhrmann was the mm -hmm. one who directed Baz it. Luhrmann. He kind of created that story in the way that the original people saw it when the sh uh, play first uh, was shown. There's just such a sense cool. of urgency, and it takes all the characters' emotions really seriously. Yeah. So. All right, uh, moving on to my number four. Um, it's from 1972. When I think of doomed romances, um, <laughs> this one was doomed from the beginning, and it is Last Tango in Paris. Uh. Marlon Brando, <laughs> Maria Schneider, two people that you knew you knew it wasn't going to work out from the very beginning. Um, you have this middle-aged man who's trying to get over the death of his wife. Uh, you have this young uh, woman who is being neglected by her filmmaker husband and they meet and they sort of have this <laughs> crazy, well not sort of, they do have this crazy sexual relationship <laughs> where they do a lot of crazy things with each other. Um, they, they have this relationship where it do has no room to grow. They don't even allow each other to know each other's names pretty much it's never a good start to the romance when you're both like trying to escape another bad situation right? exactly exactly <laughs> and then i mean the closing the closing parts where uh marlon brando reveals his name to maria schneider and that kind of chase scene it's really really i mean it's, it's, it's good an and film. it's really kind of disturbing um yeah it's a really interesting movie um but i i enjoyed it so all right, good pick. I didn't think about that one. All right, my number four, 
n not similar to Last not Tango similar. in Paris. Not what you would want to watch with the double feature of Last Tango in Paris. Um, from 1998, Penny Marshall's Big. <laughs> Whoa. Starring, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Tom Hanks, Elizabeth Perkins. Um, talk about a romance that can never <laughs> last, right? He's actually yeah. 13 years old. And, yeah, the kind of implications that come with 13 year old I mean, growing up woman, it's kind of, whoa. Uh-huh, and I, one of the most impressive things about this film is the way it treats that romance kind of seriously and faces the awkwardness head on. Mm -hmm. um, and she's sort of refreshed by his... Um, kind of youthful exuberance or something? Yeah, his enthusiasm for the whole process because mm -hmm. she's been dating these dudes who are just completely jaded. And he's, you know, wowed by the sight of her in a bra and probably like the <laughs> cutest scene in the whole film, which should be sort of creepy. But like, it's just like someone is seeing her for the first time. And then when she finds out that he how the real story of what's going on, it's it's heartbreaking. It mm -hmm. is. Yeah. But, but it was like, it's a nice heartbreaking moment because it was like a great learning experience for both of them about like what they deserve out of life, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't I love this movie and uh I will watch it anytime it's Yeah, on. you gotta you gotta give it to the performers in, uh -huh. in that film because the only way to make that even remotely work is through their interactions together. So yep. excellent pick. Uh my number three is one of my all time favorite films. It's from two thousand Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love. Holy shit, I didn't even think about this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. How did I miss this? Yes. All so right, you thank have, God you have this. Yes, you have Maggie Kyung, Tony Leung. <sighs> they both have, are in these so relationships wonderful. that kind of end. Um, they, they break up uh, and they kind of meet and connect through the shared kind of heartbreak. And the, throughout the entire story of that film, you kind of wonder, will they get together? Won't they get together? I mean, are they better than their respective spouses? Or will they kind of fall into the same kind of framework that they mm -hmm. did? Um, beautiful, beautiful movie. Incredible, incredible acting. Um, Maggie Kyung, Tony Leung. It's like they, they express so much through with like the, the smallest glance. Um, just one, oh, a really wonderful lush, acting. beautiful, beautiful movie. Uh, I, I love that movie. So I'm probably going to oh, watch that, it soon. That movie's amazing. Yeah, so amazing. absolutely. Good pick. Okay, my number three is uh, just one of the best movies ever made. I don't even need to be the one to say it because many people have said it before, mm -hmm. and that is Casablanca. That's it's my number two. Oh, <laughs> yay! What perfect timing. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we can talk about it together right now. Oh, <laughs> the, uh, these stories where people have to pick duty over love, mm -hmm. like, I mean, that's a, that's a trope that we, c we can return to a lot in this doomed romance genre, but this one in particular is extra heartbreaking because you have this other layer where for most of the movie, Rick doesn't even realize what happened the first time they were yeah, together exactly you know so he regains what he thought he never had only to instantly have to give it up again right um so it's just and it's kind of <sighs> tough too because you know in all the posters it's in in all of the pictures ever from that movie it's always rick and and ilsa right mm -hmm. but the problem is victor laszlo is like a fucking hero you know he's I like know. Like, they don't make it easy for you. Like, and she's like, not with some lame -o that she totally shouldn't be with exactly. and blah, blah, blah. Victor Laszlo is kind of the shit, you know? And yeah. Paul Heinrich is a great actor and exactly. a, a very attractive man who also played, you know, other people's main love interest in mm -hmm. other movies, you know? How many times did he get together with Betty Davis? Right. Like, he's, he's no slouch. Right. But he's just not the right guy for Elsa. <laughs> I know, it's the, the, it's beautiful the way it's it's set up. It's like, you know that Rick and Ilsa were meant to be together, but at the same time, if they got together, it would be kind of selfish and kind of wrong. I know, um, but it's like, it's, <laughs> it sounds so melodramatic, but it's perfect for these movies from the 40s starring these actors where like the only thing that could keep these two together is the forces of World War II. You <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. exactly. Like, it had to take a world war for, for them to, to be separated. To keep these yeah. two apart. Oh. Oh man, it's just a movie that can you you can watch over and over again. Yeah, it, it rewards you with every view. Um, God, I, I love that movie. It's so great. great. So it's a classic. Great. I mean, it's undebatable. So all right. So that was your number two. Yeah. So okay. I guess so we'll, we'll move on to my number, number two. Um, and that is another uh, like surprise heartbreaker. Um, another one I I can watch a lot even though it hurts because it's just so well acted, so well written. A recent one that is 2005's Brokeback Mountain. Oh okay. 
Um, another one where the, you know, the circumstances of society are keeping these two apart. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I just, I think Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal are both amazing in this mm -hmm. film. I don't doubt for a second their chemistry with each other, the, of these characters who never have a chance to even, like, really explore that same emotion with someone else. Right. So it's, like, this precious thing that where they had this time together and then they keep trying to recreate it and every time they do, it's it's worse and worse. Right. They just yeah. fight more and more. Oh, what a what a sad film. Yeah, it's kind of kind of like the Age of Innocence, where you have two people that want to be together, but the the pressures of like society and how things are quote unquote supposed to be are pulling them away. And even them, they don't realize exactly what they're supposed to be doing or like how how things are supposed to work out. They just know that this feels right. Um, it's a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, great pick. Should have won best. That's another debate altogether. <laughs> um, okay, so let's move on to my number one. My number one film, uh, <laughs> it's a doomed romance that was doomed because it was a messed up relationship. <laughs> it's 1958's Vertigo. Oh. Scotty and Madeline could never have been together because, well, Madeline never existed. <laughs> And, that is a particular problem. <laughs> yeah. And the issue with it is that, you know, Scotty sees Kim Novak again in the character of Judy Barton. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the woman. It's the person that he fell in love with, but it's not the idea. It's, it's not the image that he had fallen in love with that he becomes obsessed with. And he goes about this crazy, like, idea about switching her to the person that she was. She She allows it to happen because she loves him. I mean, it's messed up. But that's why it's so good because yeah. it's messed up. You it's know? really messed it's up. Like they they want what they can't have. Uh -huh. It's like oh, I don't I don't know. It's just really convoluted and complex, but it's so freaking awesome because it's so messed up. Yeah, that's an interesting pick. This is another one I didn't think about, and uh, yeah, the very concept of romance is messed up in this movie. Exactly. So it's like, exactly. There's a lot of that. We could talk about that one for a while. I think. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, my number one, also going back to the classics, like mm -hmm. they don't really make these doomed romance movies like like now, like they used to. And mm -hmm. uh, it's 1945, David Lean, mm. Brief Encounter. I had a, I had a thought oh. that you were going to pick this one. Stab me in the heart. The worst <laughs> movies. Okay, the worst movies for me, and by worst I mean like most painful slash best. Mm -hmm. Um, are these <laughs> ones where they only get the briefest time together, mm -hmm. which is like it's in the fucking title in this yeah, one, right? Yeah. They have like a few days, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And they don't even get to say goodbye they because don't. of that horrible woman that sits down <laughs> next to them when they're trying to say their last goodbye before they're never going to see each other again. They never even get to say so. He just has to like squeeze her shoulder as yeah. he leaves the train station. Like, it, this is so hard to watch. It's really tough and to watch. Especially it's so because good. it's like, it's not just I was unhappy and then now I can't have happiness. Both of them were okay with their lives before right, they met yeah. each other and so now they have like they they've realized what they can't have this level of love that mm -hmm. they never even imagined was a possibility we're both in regular relationships mm -hmm. we're happy we go to the store and then we go home um <laughs> <laughs> and and now their regular lives with perfectly nice people are ruined right because of these few days that they had together i mean this movie annihilates me right absolutely annihilates me and celia johnson and trevor howard i mean the perfect perfect performances mm -hmm. really tough to pull off too i think yeah i think it even makes it worse that their lives that they were living were okay Perfectly you know it would have been if Her it was messed up so nice. yeah like, if it was messed up if they lived terrible <sighs> lives then it would have like it wouldn't have worked it wouldn't have been as heartbreaking i think yeah. um just a quick note criterion just announced that they're going to be re-releasing brief encounter in a david lean box set Ooh, nice so look out for that um, that man made a lot of really good movies. Yes, yes, he did. All right, that does it for our top five doomed romances. Um, if you have any that you'd like to mention, please let it be known at MacGuffinPodcast.com, and we will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace. <laughs>